Hello, and welcome to Peer to Spring Software's 54th Frequently Asked Question video. I'm Ernie Zor, and I'll go over some facts about libraries in this video. I think Microsoft introduced the concept of libraries in Windows 7, and no one, including myself, paid much attention to them. You, you saw them in the Explorer window, but you really didn't have that much use for it. It seemed when you did go and look at it, and you, it was hard to figure out what exactly was there or whatever. And so let's let's take a look. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm on Windows 11 here, and I'm going to get File Explorer up. And here's libraries right here. So they always made it very easy to get to. But again, like I said, most of us skipped over them, not really knowing what they're good for. First of all, what are libraries? And, and what they are is virtual containers. And the virtual means that they really don't have a physical location on your hard drive like normal folders do. Instead, they are just imaginary containers and, and what they can do is they can hold files and folders from various places on your hard drive. Well, what do I mean by imaginary? Well, regular folders on your hard drive, they do actually have a specific location on the disk. For example, my Puritus folder is in the root of my C drive. I could describe its location by giving you the path. C colon backslash Puritus. Libraries are different because they don't have a physical place on your hard drive. They don't really have that a path in that sense. Essentially, what they are is they're links or they're pointers, just like the shortcuts on your desktop. That's not really the folder or the application that you're clicking on on your desktop. It's a pointer pointing to the folder that you want to open or pointing to the application that you want to start up. So anyway, what good are these imaginary containers? I've researched libraries a couple of times over the years, and I learned that, in my opinion, they have two advantages. They're great for organizing your hard drive, and even more important to me, the second thing is that their contents are automatically backed up by the file history application, which is the backup application that's built into, or not built into, but comes with Windows. I'll explain how libraries help you organize your hard drive, but first, Let's make sure your computer is set up to show them because I'm told that certain Windows versions have them hidden by default. I think Windows 11 does that. Uh, one expert explained how, how he uses them by saying, I prefer to keep all of the files associated with a particular object, or project rather, including pictures in a folder for that project within the documents library. I don't know about you, but it kind of gives me an idea about how you could use them to organize client-related files and folders that they could be scattered all over your hard drive, but the library would be good for putting links to all of them. So if you want to do something for your client named Joe Smith, you don't have to go to the documents folder and look up his will or go to the probate folder and find this and that and the other or the uh, separation agreement, things like that. You just go to the library for that, for that particular client. So that's kind of a good thing. But I, anyway, I started to show you, at least if you're going to follow along here, you want to make sure that your computer is set to show libraries. So if you see libraries on the left side like you do here, well, actually, you might look there and, and think that uh, the libraries are not hidden, but I guess the libraries item is always on the left side of File Explorer, even if the libraries is set to hidden. don't understand how that works, but I'm going to show you. And we'll learn together. We'll go open File Explorer, which I've done already. I'm going to click on the, the view. Let me just munder around here for a second. View. Oh, wait a minute. OK. This looks like familiar territory. The View tab. Yeah, these instructions that I'm looking at aren't really quite right. Show libraries. You see there at the bottom of that? OK, so that was in your folder options. Uh, not this view, but rather the View tab in folder options. Good luck finding it, but it, you know what? It's probably uh, okay anyway, but it doesn't hurt to check, and that's how you do it. Okay, now that we've ensured that the computer is set to show libraries, let's look at what we've got. I already have File Explorer open. You can see the libraries item in the left pane. I'm going to click on it, 
and there's the contents. Looks like I was testing out the libraries there, and I made one for as a test. Uh, there are, what is this, seven items in there, not counting this one that I put in there. Uh, camera roll, documents, music, pictures, saved pictures, and videos. These containers are already available and ready to use. And just to give you a for instance of how I did this is that I've got a folder where we keep all of our programming code. And, and Pure to Spring Software has got, I don't know, 25, 30 programs, I think, uh, out there. And it's got thousands or maybe even 100,000 lines for each application. We keep them all together in, in a source folder. Each, each application has its own subfolder in a, in a parent folder called source. What I think it w what, what was good for in the library sense is we dragged that source folder into the library. Now, you're not really moving it. You're just putting a link to it there. And that, what's the good of that? Uh, I mean, I could just click on the source uh, icon and get to the source folder just like that, okay? But that's not why I put it there, really. I put it there because I want it to get backed up automatically by file history. That's how you add an existing library or an existing folder to the, to the library folder. You merely find it. I, I can even do it again here. Let, let's get rid of, we'll, put, we'll take source out of there. I'll put it in the trash can. Okay. And, let, and I'm going to go, hopefully. Stumbling around here. Let's go to, I always like to go to this PC. It seems like I'm, I always know where I'm going there. Okay, here's the source folder, okay? Okay, no, here's source. Okay, oh, I know, it, undo, it undid when I deleted it. it let, let's go over that again. Um, I'm going to go back to the library's master folder here. I'm going to delete the source, and I'm going to put it back in. And this time, I'm going to try to do it right. I'm going to go, and I'm going to find the folder. It's not hard to find. There it is. Let me right-click on it. Oh, there you go. You see it? I see it. Include in library, and it asks what library do I want to include it in? Uh, you know, I could create a new library and put it in there. That would be one way. Let's. I'll just put it in the documents folder, in the documents li Source is already included in there. Okay. Well, anyway, that's how you do it. You right-click on the folder, and you select uh, where you want to um, include it in the library, and it'll let you choose which library you want to put it in. And you know what? I think I accidentally stumbled on the, the next thing I was going to talk about, which is let's, let's go. I'm going to go to the Documents Library here. In the Documents Library, there's Source. Let's delete that. Boy, that would be a kicker if I actually deleted the, the, uh, all the source code. They'd fire me. You know, I hesitate to do that, actually. I'm going to leave it there, but I am going to uh, do what I said and create a new one. Let's, let's try that. I'm going to right-click here. New library. Wow, okay. I hope you're, you're watching this carefully because I make two mistakes before I get it right. And I got it right now. Here we go. Watch. Library. Now, I give it a new name. I'll call it Source. And do I want to rename the second one Source? Um, no, I don't really. I was just showing you how to do it. I could call it anything. Over here, I called it test. Over here, it's automatically called new library. Just like when you create a new folder, it automatically gets a default name of new folder. So anyway, uh, there's no sense in me undoing this thing. And like I say, I, I want to be able to give you um, FAQ number 55 uh, without getting fired by Pure to Springs for accidentally deleting all their source code. That would be a bad thing. Uh, anyway, and so deleting a library, even that we covered already. Uh, you, let's get rid of this test one. I'll, I'll, I'll click on it. I right-click on it. Oh, and yeah, here's the garbage can. A lot of times, it's a, if you're a different version of Windows, it might be a, a delete command, but there it is. Bang, library gone. And even this new library, it's, it's an empty nothing. So I just put it in there as an example of how to create a new library called new library. Although you can rename it and call it whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to go back over here. Er, no, you know what? It leaks. Uh, right click on it and select delete. There you go. That's the way I really want it. I don't know. That might be it. Yeah. 
Now, so remember, if you want to use libraries, you're going to do it for two reasons. You're going to do it to organize, like, it, like I gave you the example of the Joe Smith client where we, his, his stuff is scattered all over the network, and we actually, and oh, that's something else I don't think I mentioned, is that it doesn't all have to be on various places on the hard drive. I think you could actually grab things off the network and, and create links to them. Uh, in, in the library folder. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it works that way. So there's two reasons uh, to have libraries. They're organizing it, and then make sure the contents are backed up, like I was saying about the, the source folder. And, and that's it. We've come to the end of this video. I, I had a, a pretty good time making it, and I hope you enjoyed it. I want to remind you that if you found this video in the least bit interesting, click the like button. What you do then is you support our channel by doing that, and you let us know that, hey, you like the thing, it was worthwhile, and we'll try to make up more that are interesting for you. And if you think you'd like to know more about upcoming videos, click the subscribe button, and that way you'll be notified when each new video is published. In closing, I know you're busy, so please accept my special thanks for taking the time to watch. I really do appreciate it, and until next time, Stay healthy and happy. I wish you all the best.